up and there she stood on the balcony as nature met her to be. The blood began beating in his temples. Her eyes were blue, black, gorgeous beads of beautiful ebony. They called, demanded him to come to her. He was up the stairs in a few bounds and before he knew it, he was standing in her doorway. Well, go on, go on. Where was I? Let's see. Oh, yes, yes. There he stood, framed in the doorway. She was on the bed. Her breath was coming heavy now in short, abrupt bursts. The veins in his throbbing temples were beating as if they would burst. So he picked up the pulsating pail of ice water and dreamily dumped it on her. That's right out of your second novel, Hot Lips. Hey, old buddy. Welcome home. Did you lose all your millions at Monte Carlo? Where have you been? I've been trying to get in touch with you since I came back. Well, to tell you the truth, old buddy, I was holed up in my room all this time working on this uh, great story. You haven't turned in one word in three months. Where is this great story? Oh, up here, old guardian of my metal treasures, up here. Okay, Harry Harris. You've got exactly 30 seconds to get off your can. I've got a job for you. You've got 15 seconds to get up from here. Are you? Five seconds. Oh, no. There's my husband. <laughs> Hey, Doug, did you say something about a job? Cool it, buddy, cool it. Enrico, come. Wait a minute. That's my suitcase and my typewriter. I'll explain later. Look, Doc, wait a minute. Am I late, T.H.? Oh, no, of course not. Doc, this is my secretary. Uh, we've got some dictating to do. Hey, Harris. Oh, uh, honey, uh, keep your pencil sharp, will you? I'll be right back. Sorry, old man. No room, no room. Harris, I'm gonna kill you. It's a little drafty in here. I'm gonna kill you, Harris. To, sir. Go straight to the airport, Enrico, and step on it. Wait a minute. What do you mean, airport? When I was in Monte Carlo, I met a, a Lord Carrington at the casino. He had a most interesting tale to tell. Was he winning or losing? This wealth, Tom, it really doesn't matter. Lord Carrington inherited an island in the Caribbean, and this island is so remote that uh, only he could approximate its location. What, pray tell, does all this have to do with me? You, playboy writer, my card-playing wife, and I are going to this island. You're starting on your next bestseller. Oh, no. Enrico, pull over. Now, wait just a minute. Let me finish. If you don't like my story, I'll take you back to the hotel, and you can continue your uh, debauchery. The, the more that I heard what was happening uh, on uh, Voodoo Island... Voodoo Island? Uh, yes, that's the name of the island. The more I began to think what a wonderful background this would make for an adventure novel. In, in the first place, the, the natives practice voodoo. So they practice voodoo. Secondly, there's a large quantity of highly poisonous snakes in the island. Oh, you're hurting your cause. Oh, now listen, please. Uh, Lord Carrington has set up a foundation to perform experiments with uh, the snake venom. There's been a famous scientist there for years uh, trying to find a cure for cancer. Interesting, but not interesting enough. Sorry. Now, wait. Let me finish. I haven't gotten to the most important part yet. These voodooists actually perform human sacrifices. And that there's um, some superstition about um, an army of, of walking dead. I presume you would call them um, zombies. You actually contemplate taking that lovely, voluptuous kook of a wife whom you claim to love, and me, your breadwinner, whom you claim to be your best friend, to an island overrun with dead people, practicing human sacrifices and voodoo for the sake of a good book? 
There is um, one important thing I, I did leave out. What is that? Girls. Girls? Virgin natives. Just waiting for some sophisticated swinger like you to come along and pluck them off their tropical vines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was very funny. Lord Carrington said that a few years ago, uh, all the men of the island were out to sea fishing when a hurricane struck and uh, it led the, left the island populated with uh, five girls to every one man. <laughs> five to one? <laughs> Interesting. Tommy, I longed for your arms, your lips, your... All right, will you please tell me what this cockamamie thing is all about? You won't believe it. Let Moneybags explain. I love... All right, okay. What the hell is this all about? Now, Carl, calm down. I'm right in the middle of the greatest canasta game ever. I've got Sophie and Demi for $3.42. And the beach boy walks by and says that this smoke calls and says pack for a week and to meet him at the airport. Now, give me the explanation. Coral, lovely. Because I love you so much and because I want you to have everything. I'm taking you and your best lover away on a vacation. Just think, four or five hours across that lovely blue Caribbean lies the land of every man's dreams. Where we can lie in the hot sun all day and drink long, cool, exotic rum drinks. Hmm? I can do that at the Fountain Blue. Okay, big mouth, just get in the plane. But... Just get in the plane. Don't talk to me like that. If you don't get in the plane this very minute, I'm going to cancel every one of your charge accounts in every department store, couture, salon in this country, and in Paris, and in London. Well, you don't have to get dirty about it. In. <laughs> It's all right, darling. We'll be there soon. Can you see it? It uh, doesn't seem to be where we marked it on the map, sir. I don't understand. Lord Carrington marked it himself. Well, we better find something soon. Look. Think you can make it? We'll make a go at it, sir. Well, switch over to the emergency tank. We are on the emergency tank now, sir. Here, let me take over. Maybe I can make the beach. of a house up at that end of the island. Hey, would you bring me a banana or coconut or something? Well, I get hungry with excitement. You could do with a little dieting, honey. Whoa, get a load of talking tubbo. Look, none of that. You stay with the plane. I'll be back as soon as possible. Enrico, you better give me my gun. Hurry back.
Maria, senor. Uh, we've been forced to land on the beach. Can you tell me where I can get some help? Sí, señor. Follow me. Bien, vienen conmigo. Here, let me take those for you. What are those drums? Ah, señor, they are voodoo drums. Desde que usted ha llegado. En esta noche va a haber un sacrificio. Sacrifice? Sí, un sacrificio por Don Bela Hueda. What's going to be sacrificed? Yo no sé, señor. No puedo hacer más. Sí, sí, Mr. Fairchild. Mr. Fairchild, if you can hear me. Don't be frightened. We're friends. We won't hurt you. Oh, Mr. Fairchild, thank goodness you're all right. I'm not Mr. Fairchild. I'm Tom Harris. Oh, yes, Mr. Harris. I'm Charles Bentley. Mr. Fairchild radioed you'd be coming. Terribly sorry this had to happen to you. I've been hunting the man who killed him for over a week. He's violently insane, of course. Suddenly went berserk, slaughtered his wife and child, and now this. I hope he didn't hurt you. Not for the want of trying. Tomas, Mario. Toman, here's the direction. He ran in that direction, didn't he? Yes, he went that way. Cuidado. Okay. We have to get to him before his own people do. They got him first. I hate to think what they do to him. You see, Mr. Harris, these are very simple people. They understand only that deed, not the cause. Deranged mind, a homicidal maniac. It's quite beyond their comprehension. Well, I saw your plane coming in. I couldn't tell where it landed. We ran out of gas and we had to land on the beach. You've had two narrow escapes. Let's hope the rest of your stay on the island isn't quite so hazardous. Come on. Pablo. Sí, señor. In Sierra, he sí, no habla. Sí, señor. Comprende? Sí, señor.
Or gave Ayas a key, eh? Eh? Vengan ustedes a sus casas. ¿Por qué es el avión a la playa, señor? No es importa. Vayan ustedes. Robbie. Ustedes cuatro esperan aquí. Sí, señor. Ustedes cuatro esperamos aquí. Mr. Fairchild, I'm Charles Bentley. How do you do? I'm Lord Carrington's overseer on the plantation here on the island. Mr. Bentley, this is my wife, Coral. Am I glad to see you, honey? Well, it's my pleasure. Well, welcome to our island. Let's go up to the house. You can freshen up. And then we'll celebrate your arrival. Thank you. What about the plane? Uh, Roby and his men will roll it up on the beach and tie it down. Take good care of you. Thank you, honey. Oh, Mr. Bentley, what a lovely house you have. It's so tropical. Well, come in, come in. Thank you. Now, please, all of you, me casa es su casa. My house is your house. This way, please. Sunset. Look, you two, there's something very strange going on in this island. I don't know what it is. But this afternoon, when I was coming up to... Guarita? Si, senor. Guarita, is it true there is to be a sacrifice tonight? Sacrifice? Who's sacrificing what? I do not understand, senor. I'll show you to your room. This way, please. We'll talk about this later. Oh, I am sorry.
what part of heaven did you fly down from? Oh, boy. Mr. Harris, I've read some of your books, and I only hope you're more original in person. Well, I'm afraid that's one of the occupational hazards of being a writer. You, uh, stand naked before the world. <laughs> well, at least you can do is tell me your name. Only on one condition, if you mix me something very cold to drink. Well, lead the way. Janine Billadou. My father, uh, Dr. August Billadou, is here on the island doing some experimental research. Oh, so your father is a man that's going to find the cure to the world's deadliest disease. Let us say, Mr. Harris, that my father is doing his very best. He works hard. Too hard, perhaps. Well, here. Mm -hmm. S salute? Uh, I see you at least mix an excellent drink, Mr. Harris. What is it? A Rob Roy. Oh. Well, what brings such an important person such as yourself to uh, Voodoo Island? To find you. <laughs> a wandering sailor came by one day and told me of a beautiful blonde goddess who inhabited this island. From which one of your books was that line? My next one, I hope. I see you've already met Janine. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harris, this is Dr. August Billadou. Oh, how do you do, Doctor? How do you do? Charles was telling me in the garden about your arrival, Mr. Harris. And if, as I understand it, you're here to gather background material for a new novel, you've certainly made a very successful start. Well, I'm afraid I'd prefer to fictionalize that incident. It must have been horrible. Well, that native that killed the fisherman and attacked me this afternoon, there was something very unnatural about him. That skin and those eyes. You know, I've heard a rumor that there's an army of walking dead on this island. Is there any truth to that? Well, maybe I can't explain this, Mr. Harris. Growing on this island is a very rare plant that when the roots are crushed and left to dry in the sun, it forms a very toxic narcotic. And for centuries, the natives have used this as we use uh, alcohol. But excessive use of this narcotic sets up a strong chemical reaction in the body tissues. Maybe that can explain the abnormal appearance of the native and his deadly intent. Well, I see you've started without us. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. I must apologize. We had a little trouble deciding what to wear. <laughs> Enrico, make that a double. Oh, I feel like swinging tonight. Well, who's this pretty little thing? Carl and Duncan Fairchild, this is Janine and Dr. August Billadou. Charles, I'm sure. Dinner served, senor. Gracias, Guarita. Ven in, Rose. If you want those cocktails, I'm afraid you'll have to bring them to the table with you. Guarita is a magnificent cook. One thing she will not tolerate is food getting cold. Perhaps it's just as well. I have a Bourgeolais I'm very proud of. Hard liquor will just dull the palate. Disagree. Someday they're going to get the clean tobacco and the right filter. Now, you mark my words. Now, gentlemen, gentlemen, huh? shall we continue this in the other room? Oh, That's a very oh, good idea. Oh, very good. Oh, that was fine. Okay. Now, Mr. Harris, what do you think of our island now? Oh, it's, it's beautiful. 
Almost unreal. What are those drums? That fisherman told me this afternoon that there would be a sacrifice tonight. Sacrifice? Nonsense. Well, in your cosmopolitan cities, when you want to enjoy yourself, you go to a nightclub. Even in your small towns, you have bars and movies and dances. Well, here on the island, when the natives want to have fun, they beat on drums and dance. Well, why do they call this island Voodoo Island? Any voodoo that's practiced on this island today is quite harmless, I assure you. Oh, really? Mr. Bentley, I noticed that you had uh, quite an interesting library, and especially the section on local religions and customs. Oh, yes, that's one of my hobbies. I was wondering if you minded uh, if I browsed around a while. <laughs> Not at all. Help yourself anytime. Thank you very much. Well, you'll excuse me. I'm afraid I have to be in the fields rather early in the morning. And I to my laboratory. Oh, uh, doctor, I was wondering if you allowed outside observers to enter your domain. I'd like very much to see your laboratory. Well, maybe in the morning after I've finished my rounds, I could give you all a tour of the island. I would like that very much. Well, good night. Good night. Anyone for a nightcap, hmm? Not for me. I feel slightly dizzy as it is. I'm game if you are, honey. Okay, cutie. <laughs> Care to take a walk? Okay. But I warn you, I've studied jujitsu. You two care to come? <laughs> now, wouldn't you hate us if we did? <laughs> no, we're just gonna stay here and get loaded. Doug? Mm. Don't you feel tired or something? Carl. Sometimes, but I paint, and I swim, and I horseback ride, and I go to San Juan about mm. twice a year. Maybe I can talk you into coming to Miami soon. Perhaps. If only I could get my father to leave his island. Why? Is there something wrong? Maybe I can help. If only you could. What's happened? That's what I'd like to find out. We were out there walking in the garden when three of these creatures with the eyes jumped on us. Three of them? I had no idea the natives were using the drug so extensively. I'll post guards around the house. First thing in the morning, my men and I will go after them. 
Now, I think it might be best if all of us tried to get some sleep. Mr. Bentley, perhaps you could answer one question first. Well, I'll try, but I'm not sure I know what's going on right under my nose. Well, these men or creatures or things or whatever they are murdered a man this afternoon and tried to kill me. Tonight, they did everything possible to kidnap Janine. Now, why? What do they want? <sighs> Mr. and Mrs. Fairchild, would you take Janine upstairs, please? Certainly. Come along, darling. I didn't want to frighten them. But you certainly have a right to know as much as I know. No, I don't pretend to know the subtlety of these people's religion. I don't think any outsider does. Here. Why these creatures want Janine? You can only guess. My guess has frightened me. Uh, this book was written by one of the foremost experts on voodooism in the world. Now, in it, he tells the story of a medical missionary in Africa whose daughter was killed by the local tribe. Yes, here it is. Dr. Jacobson had been treating the natives for a disease which they had been stricken with for some time. So many of them were dying that they were willing to try anything. All the young virgins of the tribe had been sacrificed to their god, Dumbella Oweda. The only girl left was Dr. Jacobson's blonde daughter. Now, one night, the son of the tribe's chief was stricken with the disease. The chief had the blonde girl sacrificed and his son recovered. Now, the fact that the doctor had treated the boy, of course, was the thing that saved his life. But the tribe believed that the sacrifice of the young blonde girl had saved the boy's life. Now, I know that the descendants of that tribe are the natives on this island. They were brought here by the slave traders centuries ago. You mean to tell me that the natives on this island today still believe they can avoid a catastrophe by sacrificing a young blonde virgin, in this case, Janine? It seems to fit. Well, can't you put a stop to this? Don't you have any control over your own people? Mr. Harris, these people have had their superstitions for centuries. Now, you can't expect them to drop them in a matter of decades. I thought you said, Mr. Bentley, earlier this evening that the voodoo practiced on this island was harmless. I don't know. I don't know what to think. I'll go post those guards. Good night. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you, but I have to talk to you. Now, I don't know what's going on in this island, but I do know you're in serious trouble. I want you to leave with us tomorrow afternoon at low tide. I can't. I can't go without my father. I'm all he has in the world. Well, your concern is very commendable, but I think this is a little one-sided. If you're all he has in the world, I should think he'd want to protect you. He's a dedicated man. You don't understand that, do you? Without his work, he'd be nothing. It's his whole life. I thought you told me you were his whole life. Please, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't know why I'm getting involved in something that's none of my business. Tom? I'm sorry. I realize you're just trying to help. I need you.
Mr. Harris. Oh, good morning, Mr. Bentley. Oh, cafe, por favor. You seem to have found food for thought. I hope you've done as well by your stomach. Oh, yes, I've been very well taken care of. Thank you. Where are Mr. and Mrs. Fairchild? They haven't come down yet. What time is it? Just after 10. You either work very quickly or you got up very early this morning. When a story interests me, I move right along. This one must be fascinating. Yes, it is. I'm writing about what's happened to us since we arrived on this island. But I'm afraid, like so much of life, no one will believe it. I don't like to seem inhospitable, but in view of what's happened, I think it might be best for you and your friends to leave the island as soon as possible. Oh, I quite agree. I have instructed Enrico to locate gas for the airplane. Terribly sorry this had to happen right now. Last night, you said you'd show me Dr. Billadu's laboratory. I'm afraid I'll have to declare the laboratory out of bounds. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll get back to work. Tom, coffee, please. Morning, Dunk. Well, well, good morning, lover. Hi, sweetie pie. Look, Dunk, your genius has been working. Hey, buddy boy, looks like you jumped off the mental wagon with vengeance. Oh, boy, I love you, I love you. Mm. Hey, lay off. You'll get the paper all soggy. If you're gonna wear that, I can't stay around here. Mm, you're sweet, honey. I'll see you two children later. Hey, hey, listen. After what happened last night, do you think it's a good idea to go wandering around this island? I've got to find out what's going on around here. But don't you want me to go with you? No, you stay here with Coral. And be ready to leave at 3 o'clock this afternoon. I've got Enrico loading the plane with gas and we'll try to take off in the wet sand. All right. You'll be happy to know that I've given our conversation of last night a great deal of thought. I've decided to ask Father if he'll leave the island with us. That is, if you want us to come. Oh, you know I do. I suppose we can get everybody into the plane. 
Of course, Coral will have to leave some of her luggage behind. And... <laughs> Come on. You get dressed and we'll go tap with your father. <laughs> Where's this place? I don't know. I've never seen it before. These are symbols that are used in voodoo sacrificial rites. this afternoon. Where's your father's laboratory? This way. Come on. This is your father's lab? Yes. Uh, during the war, the, the Navy built a gun emplacement in the cliffs to protect the bay. Well, my father built it over into his lab. Come on. Hurry. I'm sorry, Miss Janine. I wanted to warn you. You must leave the island. Why must she leave the island? She's in great danger. She must leave now, today. In danger from whom, Fernando? Papa Nebo. He wants to make you the goat without horns. What do you mean, goat without horns? I must leave now. Please, Miss. You must go.
Janine! What are you doing here? I told you never to come here. Mr. Harris, I thought I left word that I wasn't to be disturbed. Father, please. I've never seen you like this before. Tom and I came to ask you to leave the island with us. You've been wanting to leave for a long time. Now's your chance. Come with us, Doctor. I have reason to believe your daughter will be in serious trouble if you stay on here. Please, leave at once. Janine, you go to the house and go to your room. Father, Do as I say! <laughs> It's too late. Why? Believe me, it is too late. I know I was very selfish in wanting to keep you here with me. Mr. Harris, I'd appreciate it if you took Janine with you. Of course, but... What's going on in here? What are you people up to? It's best that you don't know. There's nothing anyone can do. I think you'd better go now. Father, please. Please come with us. I can't leave without you. So goodbye, baby. It's late. We're going to have to leave if we're going to catch that tide. No. No, Tal, I'm not leaving. Bye! No! No, 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 papá Nebo, por favor, no me... 
fare che cosa? Aguantano! No! 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 Where did that boat come from? What are you going to do with the flare gun? I don't know, but it's better than nothing. I wonder where this leads. I don't know, but we haven't got much choice. Comedian, put it on. Thank <laughs> you. 
was getting no place with the injections of the animals. So I started using natives as human guinea pigs. And instead of getting closer to a cure for cancer, the bombarded snake venom was setting up a curious reaction in the body tissues, making a subject devoid of will, a, a human vegetable. Please, doctor, don't talk. Three natives died because of my futile attempts. And when he found the results of my experiments, Bentley became obsessed with the idea of creating an army of these unfortunate people. And he threatened to expose me to the authorities unless I helped him with this mad scheme. But why did Bentley try to kill Janine? Bentley needed father. With me out of the way, you wouldn't have any fear of him leaving. Oh, my baby. What a life I've given you. Mr. Harris? Yes, sir. Perhaps. the top of the trellis which led to her bedroom and cautiously he peeked inside. There she was on the bed, naked, her bedclothes thrown off because of the heat. His heart stopped at her magnificence. He climbed through the window and stood there looking at her. Slowly she stirred in her sleep. Slowly her eyes began to open and they looked at each other. At that rare moment they knew they must have each other. He stripped off his clothes and was about to go to her when... Oh, you, you... Oh, hi. You, you... Oh! oh!